The objective here is to synthesize information taken from multiple online sources to create a cohesive description of a computing innovation. So basically it's like a Flash Talk Friday on steroids. It's going to be a lot. I'm, I tried to reduce the amount of pictures I put into this presentation. Um, so let's just dive in right away. Today we're basically refining our ability to research innovations and create a determination based on that research. I'm going to ask you to research a particular topic you liked and mold that into the requirements that the College Board has. So basically what I'm saying here is you're going to search again for something you've already learned about and learned of in one of your flash talks and then take that information you're going to put that into the requirements that the College Board is looking for in order to satisfy the performance task part of the AP test. So when you're approaching this part of the performance task I want you to think that if the thing you want to talk about if the thing has no bits it's not going to fit what we're looking for. All right, Your computer innovation must have a strong connection to computing. This means some sort of binary process must occur. If you can use the word data you should be fine to choose that topic. And some examples include Google Glasses, self-driving cars, cell phone apps, social networking, e-commerce, etc. Maybe some non-examples would be, um, you know, research in the human genome. Like that's a biological thing and though there may be some cutting edge stuff on it, cutting edge technology related to it, if you're not talking about anything related to data, then it's not going to fit. When you go to do this performance task, you're going to need to create an artifact. So let me just briefly talk about the artifact and then we'll save that for another time. I actually want to save it for last because just writing a 700 word essay is going to be, I think, pretty easy compared to uh, this artifact requirement. So it says here, computing innovations impact our lives in ways that re can require considerable study and reflection for us to fully understand them. In this performance task, you explore a computing innovation of your choice. A computing innovation is an innovation that includes a computer or program code as an integral part of its functionality. Your close examination of this computing innovation will deepen your understanding of computer science principles. You will be provided with a minimum of eight hours of class time to develop, create, and submit the following. The artifact and the 700 word essay. The artifact must provide an illustration, representation, or explanation of the computing innovation's intended purpose, its function, or its effect. The computational artifact must not simply repeat the information supplied in the written response and should be primarily non-textual. So here are some options for that. You can submit a video, an audio, or PDF file. You can use computing tools and techniques to create one original computational artifact. So this includes visualization, a graphic, a video, a program, or an audio recording. And here are some acceptable file types. And I'll let you read through those. Of course, PDF files must not exceed three pages, and video or audio files must not ex exceed one minute in length. And and must not exceed through 30 megabytes in size. When you go to submit one PDF file, you will be responding directly to each prompt. Clearly label your responses 2A through 2E in that order, and your responses must provide evidence of the extensive knowledge you have developed about your chosen computing innovation and its impact. Remember, here you have eight hours of class time to get this done. So that is a lot. Write your responses so that they would be understandable to someone who is not familiar with the computing innovation. Include citations as applicable within your written responses. Your response to prompts 2A through 2D combined must not exceed 700 words. And the references required in 2E are not included in the final word count. So that will, I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. Here's a slide about good and bad artifacts, but again, I'll go over that another time. So let's think about what we've done so far. So far, each week, each Friday, we've done research on a brand new innovation. Take, for example, this brain-computer interface. And I've had you jot down 10 notes from the article that you've found through four choices of websites and then use these notes to d make a determination as whether it's overall a good thing or a bad thing. So let's take it and organize it into the College Board's must-do steps and look at that word 
a must in all caps, just like that word is cat all capitalized in RFCs that you read. So take this information, put it into a format that the College Board will appreciate, and of course label each part of it 2A through 2E. Okay, so basically here I have a recipe for your success. I suggest you approach the task, the performance task, in this way. Of course, you can use other ways. As long as you're successful, I will not micromanage your, your recipe for success, your strategy to succeed there. But here's what I su uh, suggest. First, just skip 2A and 2B, okay? Um, don't do the artifact fact first, do it last. Then we're going to start on 2C and 2D. Don't forget that 2E is actually just a, a citation part, so the 2C and 2D is where a lot of the writing is going to take place. This list right here is basically 2A is the artifact, 2B is the writing about what inspired you to create the artifact, 2C is about the effects that your innovation has, and 2D will be the data, the how, uh, why and maybe the concerns that the the data part of your innovation will relate to. All right, so the second thing you should do is, okay, start on 2C. So the first thing is just setting up your paragraphs, understanding what um, the, the two paragraphs will be about, effects and data. And I'm going to give you a, a more detailed of example in that of that in just one moment. Right now, um, your second step would be to start on 2C, so you're just going to start explaining your innovation's purpose. Think of this part like an introduction, and then an introduction that leads directly into the effects. The third thing you'll do is within 2C, you're going to move on to positive and negative effects. And the prompt for that looks like this. It says, explain at least one beneficial effect and at least one harmful effect the computing innovation has had or has the potential to have on society, economy, and culture. And look at those words, society, economy, and culture, like use these words in your explanation and you should be fine. Now, move on to your fourth and last paragraph, which is 2D, using specific details. Describe the data your innovation uses, how the innovation consumes as input, uh, produces as output, and or transforms data, and at least one data storage concern, data privacy concern, or data security concern directly related to your innovation. As you're wrapping up this paragraph, this is the money paragraph for vocabulary, all right? We did this vocabulary lesson in class because I really need you to put the vocabulary words into your writing. Near the end of this slide show, I will provide you with a word bank to start thinking about um, in terms of using for your, your essay here, okay? If you want more guidance on top of mine, if you just go to this link or, you know, Google the keywords in this link here, um, you can read the College Board's suggestion to approaching this performance task. But I try my best here to make it a little more simplified for you. Okay, so step one, going back to step one, it says basically lay out your paragraphs. So this is what I am thinking when I say you should lay out your paragraphs. So I go back to one of my old Flash Talk innovations, and I'm looking at brain-computer interface. Then I start reading through my own notes, and uh, here on maybe a scratch piece of paper or somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and jot down where I think these notes can fit in. So the first one, it says Neuralink Company has raised $27 million. Okay, I'm not really sure where that would fit in into my requirements here. All right, so I'm just going to put not applicable right now. The second one, Advanced Biotechnology Enhancements. Well, if I'm talking about advanced biotechnology enhancements, I think that the brain inter brain computer interface this would this would raise a concern, okay? So I just jotted down concern. Obviously, that goes into what paragraph here? Number step 4 says in your fourth and last paragraph, you will be talking about concerns. And even though it's talking about biotechnology, I will have to probably do additional research to figure out how I can use the word data inside of that concern. Okay, so moving on here, it says Elon Musk equals Tesla and SpaceX chief executive. He's also, I didn't write this in my note, but I just remember he's also involved with Neuralink here. So using that information, number three, I think I could fit that detail into my introduction paragraph. When I'm talking about the purpose of the brain computer interface, I can at that moment talk about who's behind the creation of the brain computer interface. 
Moving to my fourth one, developing high ultra bandwidth brain machine interfaces. So, geez, right there, the word bandwidth completely relates to data. So there's something for my data paragraph. I'm not going to go through every one here because you can read, you can pause the video and read more if you needed um, more examples, but basically I'm saying we're going to systematically go through an old set of notes and then try to uh, put these into a, a good idea for a, a paragraphs, okay? Again, you have eight hours to complete this task. So in class, we'll do one practice one here. Then we're going to do another practice one as your final test in this first semester. And after that, you should be ready to go. All right, so now that my paragraphs are all set up, uh, the second step says to start on 2C. So go ahead and just start writing, write about the innovation's purpose. And then you're going to move on there to those uh, uh, types of effects. The last part is to f do the last paragraph, okay? And within this last step, you should be thinking about how much vocabulary have I added into the 700 words that you should be able to find within 2C and 2D. I read all these this information on a website, so I'm going to need to refer to that website. Let's say I have come, I I didn't even cite it when I did it in class uh, four months ago. So let's say. I can't find that old URL. All I have to do to find more information is start to Google some of these keywords right here and get new citations and look at some new information. And as you're going through this process, paying attention to your word count, if you need to add a little bit more in one of the paragraphs, you can jump to that paragraph and do so. Almost done here. This slide, if you just want to pause, this is basically what you'll stare at when you have the performance task in front of you. You'll have 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, and then don't forget you have 2E. You're not freaking out because oh, you're not writing a paragraph. You're just going to provide a list of at least three online or print sources used to create your artifact and or support your response to the prompts provided in the performance task. So let me go over now to a Word document and kind of show you what the essay would look like. So here we are, and I highly suggest that you open up a Word document because right down here it says 751 words. Right down here um, is your word count. And then what you can do is just copy and paste this onto Canvas and post it. That way we can all share and see each other's work, and I'll be able to give you some direct feedback from your work today. So let's just ignore this artifact right now. Here is an explanation or an example of an explanation to an artifact and notice I label it 2A and then you move down and then going down here is 2B and I won't read this to you because I know you can read so you can always pause and read this example if you need to there's 2C, 2D and I'd like 2E to look something like this the URL and I'd like 2E to look something like this. You have the URL, you'll have the author, the title, and ignore this part and make sure you have a date. So it's pretty easy. URL, author, title, and date that you looked up the URL. Not the date that the article or the thing was written, just the day's date that you're staring at that link. If you have these four things in your citations, you should be good. And notice it says one, two, three right here. That's the minimum, so at least hit that minimum. You can do more if you'd like. But it says one, two, three because up here, right there, that's where this that's the way I like to do citations. So you say something and then you put the number, this is a footnote essentially, you put the number of the source there. So this reporter.rit.edu link right here, like the article about the dangers of giving in to virtual reality, that information can be found right here in my paper, whether it's a quote or your, your own words. And be careful with the quotes. I remember in college using too many quotes on a paper one time, and the professor gave me an F because when he asked for a five-page paper and three of the pages are just quotes, um, he's not going to give me credit for that. So don't, you know, make the same mistake I did. Uh, be very careful of the quotes. Make them minimal. And today you have the opportunity to practice, so I will be reading your work and then giving you personalized feedback on that work.
The last thing I want to mention to you is just make sure you're using vocabulary after you write the paper. Maybe do a quick vocab check and also prioritize, please. Prioritize the type of types of vocabulary you're using. Like all these words are great, but if you're saying data, binary, bits, protocol in the paper, I think that will really please them. And even scheme, of course. But I know you know these four words really well by now. So the DOL today is to go and find one of the innovations you wrote about that's interesting. Make sure it's related to a computing innovation, that, a.k.a. using data, something that uses data. And, okay, just follow the directions in this video on how to create a 700-word essay.